time went by fast, but the level of enthusiasm did not come down. Despite hectic schedule and intense activity, children were as fresh and full of energy as ever. By the third day, young scientists had presented 601 projects. They had come to Chennai from 33 states of the country. All child scientists, as they are called here, presented papers around the central theme of the Congress. For example, Akruti Gupta successfully conducted a novel experiment to convert water hyacinth into a source of green energy. Good evening, honorable judges and my dear fellow participants. I am Akriti Gupta of DAV Public School, Hazari Bagh, representing Jharkhand in the 18th National Children's Science Congress to present my project on the topic, Water Hyacinth, the Potential Source of Green Energy. My team members are Shikha Kumari and Tanisha Agarwal. In the open land, when the domestic wastes are disposed, their organic and inorganic matter is leached out, which eutrophy the nearby aquatic body like pond or lake, thus leading to the overgrowth of harmful weeds like water hyacinth. Moreover, the growth of water hyacinth in such eutrophied lakes is cleaned up by the fishermen and are dumped on the land surrounding these aquatic water systems. By utilizing it for the purpose of solving burning problems of global warming and energy crisis besides land management, the aerobically decomposing water hyacinth was responsible for these warmer conditions at the place. Then we thought, why not to utilize the disposed water hyacinth and the generated heat for a useful purpose like overcoming energy crisis. First of all, to assure ourselves that sufficient amount of heat is released by water hyacinth to be converted into electricity, we conducted some experiments. Fully assured, we started constructing our model bioconverter. Now let us have a look at its construction. Bioconverter is a cuboidal box, black from outside and silver shiny from inside, with four layers of insulation of cement, vacuum and bakelite in between. When the aerobically decomposed water hyacinth collected from the site is put into the anaerobic chamber through this inlet for biomass and is allowed to go for anaerobic decomposition, it releases heat which is absorbed by the black surface of the aluminium tray which heats the water. The heat which further tries to escape is reflected back again and again into the inner chamber because of the layers of insulation, the silver shiny surface and the convex roof of the thermal reflector. Gradually, water starts changing into steam. When the required temperature and pressure for water to change into steam is attained, indicated by the pressure gauze, the knob is opened to release the steam which rotates the turbine and then through the means of an electrical generator, electricity can be generated. We spread the concept of our project to the manager of Swan Chanti Park and the village panchayats of Noora and Mundane. The authorities were convinced and assured us to implement the bioconverter as an alternative source of electricity soon in their area. I, I hope that this bioconverter will soon be undertaken in Hazaribagh and would help not only Hazaribagh but also Jharkhand of not being deprived of energy in future. After all, energy conserved is energy produced. Thank you. Rishikant Kumar of Bihar tested the soil of nearby fields and experimentally found out what composition of soil will give high yield of chana, jowar and moong crops. Rishikant had some vital information to pass on to the farmers. My name is Rishikant Kumar, I am from Bhagalpur and I am from Bihar. हमारे टीम के सारे सदस्यों ने फसलों का पैदावार बढ़ाने के लिए उपयुक्त मिट्टी का चुनाव हेतु इस परियोजना को तैयार किया है हम लोगों ने जिस बागवाड़ी के जो खेतों से मिट्टी लिया वहाँ एक स्क्वायर फीट नाप के उसी जगह से मिट्टी को लिया और उसमें प्लांट लगाया और उसमें जो मिट्टी जांच के लिए जो लिया उसमें एक सेंटीमीटर हम लोगों ने नीचे खोद दिया और उसके वो मिट्टी को लिया जाँचने के लिए हम लोगों ने मिट्टी में हर जगह एक जैसे हम लोगों ने चार जगह की मिट्टी को लिया उसे उस गमले को तीन तीन के श्रेणी में रखा और तीन फसलों को लिया एक जगह की मिट्टी में 
तीन फसल को लगाया खेत की मिट्टी में चना 5 सेंटीमीटर मूंग 6.1 सेंटीमीटर जो 8 सेंटीमीटर सबसे पहले हम लोगों ने देख लिया कि चना को भी फसल 100 जो लगाया उसमें से कितना उगा और कौन से बीज स्वस्थ है उसके लिए हम लोगों ने एक थाली में पानी को लिया और 100 बीज को डाला जो अच्छी थी वो नीचे चल गई और जो खराब थी उसको हटा दिया और जो जिसमें हटा उसमें डाल दिया साइंस में होता है कि कोई भी टेस्ट जरूरी नहीं जो पहले हम लोगों ने किया वो सही हुई ही वो इसीलिए हम लोगों ने वाटर होल्डिंग कैपेसिटी जो नापा एक जगह की मिट्टी को वो चार बार नापा और चार बार नाप के उसका औसत निकाल कर और एवरेज निकाल कर परसेंटेज निकाला इन चारों में से सबसे ज़्यादा अच्छी हुई बाग वाली की मिट्टी हम लोगों ने क्योंकि 6.5 से लेकर 7.5 तक जिसका पीएच हुआ उसमें फसल लगाया जा सकता है और 6.5 से लेकर 8.5 तक भी लगाया जा सकता है इसीलिए हम लोगों ने चार जगह में से कौन अच्छा हुआ इसका टेस्ट क्या ये बाग वाली की मिट्टी है चार जगह की मिट्टी को लिया जैसा कि मेरा निष्कर्ष निकला या मूंग भी है मेरा निष्कर्ष यह निकलता है कि मैं अपने अगल बगल के किसानों को यही कहना चाहूँगा कि अगर बागवारी जैसी मिट्टी हमें मिलेगी तो उसमें चना मूंग जौ अच्छी फसल होगी और मेरा आगे का सोचे कि मैं और दो चार जगह की मिट्टी को जाँचूँ थैंक यू Joy Deepa Das, a young scientist from Tripura, tried to solve centuries-old problem of jhum cultivators. Namaskar, I am Mrs. Mitchell Deepa Das, representing small but wonderful state Tripura. I am highly privileged to present my project entitled "An Analytical Study on the Effects of Jhum Cultivation on Land," under the sub-theme "Anthropogenic Activities of Land." First of all, we did a practical survey on different areas of our Telemura subdivision, that is Khasia Mongol, Gokul Nagar, and Bilaiham, under Telemura R D block and Mungia Kami R D block. From the data collected and the analysis, we have seen that the Jumia choose a land which is in the hilly areas, and they cut all the trees and shrubs present there. Then they let it to dry under the sun. Next, they burn all the forest dry vegetative parts. Next, irrigation is a big problem for them, and they have to solely depend on rainwater. They hardly use any pesticides and fertilizers. Next, the raindrops that are generated from the space forces causes soil erosion. Jumias have to do shifting cultivation as the jum cycle is of five to six years, so they have to move from one place to another after five to six years. We have also done a experiment to quantify the soil erosion of that jumias field. First of all, in a zoom field, we have made an area marked with 15 centimeter length and 15 centimeter breadth. Then, with height of 1 meter and 20 centimeter, we held one strainer. From this, we have poured uh, 40 liter of water in five minutes. So, when this is gone, we have also made one scale there. So, the height of soil loss was average 1.3 centimeter. So, you can imagine how much soil is lost every year due to rain. the jhum soil is not quite suitable for cultivation it should be improved more and more and for irrigation we have suggested them to do a rainwater harvesting system or a pole in the jhum field next for soil erosion they can do terrace farming there which will reduce the speed of the flow of water and thus they can reduce the soil erosion for this project i cannot alone do this and so i pay my heartly thanks to my guide teacher mr pravid pravid ghosh Fishery College of Art, Tripura, and of course you all. That's all. Thank you. Very good. Very good. The philosophy behind the National Children's Science Congress was rooted in a solid ground, but how did the organizers look at the National Children's Science Congress? The basic objective of the Children's Science Congress is to providing a platform. where they can showcase their creativity in the form of activity and secondly this is a group activity through this group activity we are trying to inculcate the spirit of working together two to five children how they can work together and give a feasible solution of a problem which they have identified at their local level and the third point i would like to say is most important 
is the methodology. They are learning the methodology of scientific, which you call a method of science, where the observation, collection of data, and collision of data, conducting the survey, conducting the experiment, validating the experiment, and interpretation of the result, and finding a solution, which they project in the form of report. National Children's Science Congress is organized in 620 districts of the country by uh, NCSTC network. And uh, this is supported by uh, NCSTC, Department of Science Technology, Government of India. First, we prepared the activity guide. And this year, activity guide was prepared in uh, Kalyani University with uh, help of the uh, many academicians all over the country. And our uh, focal theme was uh, land resource used for prosperity and safe for posterity. Then after that, it was given to the, all the states and they printed their activity guide in their own language. So that is one uh, unique thing happened in the country in which we encourage the students to prepare their project in the mother tongue.